Over the past few weeks, we've been talking about having a website for your voiceover business. We've covered everything from knowing when the time is right that you could benefit from having a website, choosing your domain name, setting up hosting, and the specific tools that you can use to put your website together. Now, today we're going to close out this website series by answering the question, what should I actually put on my website? So if you want to know how to lay it out and optimize it so you're more likely to get work from it, plus get an idea on a simple way to bring people to your website, that is what this episode is all about. Welcome back to the Voice Acting 101 podcast. I'm Jason. Over the past few episodes, we've been talking about websites a lot. And this week, this is going to be the last episode on websites, and hopefully it's a way to wrap everything up. So we're going to go over the actual layout of the website and how to optimize it in a way that gets you more work. Now, maybe you already have a website, but it's just sitting there. Maybe it's not getting any traffic to it or you aren't getting any business from it. If that's a problem that you're having, it could be that your website just isn't laid out correctly. And I should say right at the start that the way that I'm going to explain this and cover it, it's not the only way that you can do it. There are probably other ways that you could try and there are different things that you could test out, see what happens. Uh, but what I'm going to explain kind of follows the best practices for website user experience and marketing. It's kind of tying those two together. And it's really just a breakdown of each section of the VO website template which if you want more details on that, you can check it out at voiceacting101.com slash website. Now, over the years, I've reviewed a lot of voiceover websites, and one of the biggest problems that I see time and time again is just a confusing layout for the visitor. Someone typically, you know, they're going to land on the website, but then they're going to struggle to find exactly what they're looking for. There's just like too many places to click. It's overwhelming and it's frustrating for the visitor. There's no real flow or process in place on the website, and the visitor just doesn't know what to do. Uh, so a lot of times, the reason for this is because we focused on what we want, and uh, we want them to hire us to record a voiceover. Uh, but if you think about it, there are many other things that take place before you actually get hired for a voiceover, typically. So getting hired, that's the end result, but the job of our website, what we want it to do, we want it to move the visitor in that direction toward hiring us. So to do that, the first thing to consider when it comes to the layout is what does the visitor want exactly? Like what is the main reason why someone is visiting your website and how can you make it easy for them to get what they want and to find what they came for? Uh, dealing in voiceover, it's pretty simple. Most of the time, if someone visits your website, they want to hear your demos. Odds are, you know, they probably have a script and they're just out there looking, trying to find the right voice for that script. Uh, they may be going from like site to site, trying to find the perfect voice for the project that they have in mind. So what they want right off the bat is to be able to listen to your demos and they're going to decide whether or not you're the right person for the script that they have and that they're hiring for. So what we want to do, we want to make it incredibly easy for them to just play our demos, right? That's the first step. That's why they're there to hear the demos. So we want to make it easy for them to play the demos. And we can make it easy for the visitor by putting the demo player at the top of the page. That top of the page section, uh, it's called the like above the fold section. It's also called the hero section, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the top section is probably the most important section because it's what every visitor is going to immediately see when they come to your website. You know, they may not scroll down. So even if you have like an amazing page below the fold, even if they don't scroll down, then they're never going to see that. You know, and that can be more work for them. So if they land on your website, they don't see what they want right away. They may never see anything more than that hero section at the top. And uh, again, because we know that they probably want to hear our demos, we want to make it easy for them. And we don't want them to have to go and click and go to another page, which goes to another page to find our demo. And we really don't even want them to have to scroll down the page to play the demos. That's why when they visit the page, they should immediately see like your demo player right there. And they're going to think, oh, here's the demo player. I can listen to the demo. That's exactly what I was looking for. You know, I, I, I didn't have to search around to try and find the demo. So having the demo player up at the top, that's super important. And there are a lot of website audio players out there, but they are usually designed for music. And ideally the difference is, you know, if you're using a demo player made for voiceover, uh, like the voiceover demo player plugin, thinking about it from the client's perspective and what they want. 
you don't want like one long demo that the client has to listen all the way through and they can't really skip around through it. They just have to listen to the entire thing to try to see if you have the style that they're looking for in that demo. Uh, if that happens, you know, if they don't like what they hear in the first three seconds, they probably aren't going to stick around for like two minutes hoping that they find what they're looking for. So instead of like having one long demo, you want to separate out each segment of your demo and that way the client can quickly jump to the next segment and they're not going to waste time just going through a two minute demo or whatever it is. And then also you can add descriptions for each segment of that demo. So that's going to be even more helpful for the client. That way they're going to be able to jump to something, you know, if you label it like high energy, then they'll know, you know, if they're looking for a high energy read, that's the demo that most likely is going to be as closest to what they're looking for. You know, you could have one uh, calm and quiet. Maybe they're looking for that. So they can kind of bounce around and they don't have to kind of just guess and wait and see what the demo is. They can read the description and then they have an idea of what to expect. And this way they can find what they're looking for faster and it just makes for a better experience for them as they come to your website. One other important note about your demo player and that is that the demos should be downloadable. Uh, and that's because sometimes the person looking for the voice, the person on your website, isn't always the same person that's making the final decision. They may have to share that MP3 with someone else. Uh, sometimes our client, you know, a lot of times uh, they're working for another client who's working for another client, and they just need to send that demo on to get approval. So they have to send it all the way up the chain. So uh, if you give them the option to just download the demo, that's another way that you're making it easier for them. So in that top area or the hero section, we've got our demos there, and we also want to try to answer four questions in as few words as possible. So that can be a bit of a challenge trying to do it. But the four questions are, what do you have to offer? Why should people trust you? What are the benefits of working with you versus someone else? Because like I said, they're probably jumping around. They've probably gone to a, a couple different websites. So why should they choose you over someone else? And then uh, most important probably is what action should they take? Like if they like what they hear, what do you want them to do next? You can answer these questions using the header or the title of the page, uh, which by the way, should be an H1 tag. That's one key to telling search engines like Google uh, what your page is about. They're going to kind of figure out what your page is about based on that H1 tag. So make sure that you use that. Uh, but you can also build trust by showing your experience. Uh, if you have social proof, you can put that out there. Maybe, you know, if you can mention something or show something somehow that you've successfully helped other clients with voiceover, that's going to build that confidence and that trust. And then uh, you also want to make sure that you're, you're saying like what you do differently than someone else, like what sets you apart uh, from the other people that they've listened to. And you can add that as like a paragraph to write it up, or you can just have a checklist to keep it simple. And then, like I said, most importantly, what action should they take next? Like what is the, it's called the call to action. What is the call to action? What do you want them to do? So based on my experience, almost all of the jobs that, that I get start with me first looking at the script, right? That's how I figure out if it's a project I want to work on. It's how I figure out what the cost is going to be, where it's going to be used. It just tells you so many details about the project. So for me, based on my experience, Looking at that script, that's like the first step. Uh, now, sometimes they don't have a script or for whatever reason they can't share it yet. But the next step is usually like, send me your script. I'm going to send you a price. And maybe you can even give them an audition and, and send that back to them. So basically on the website, what you're saying is, you know, if you listen to the demos, you like what you hear, the next step is to send me your script and I'm going to give you a quote. So that is the call to action, to send me your script. That's the one that I've used in the past uh, your call to action may end up being different, but in general, in that hero section, what you want is your demo player. You want to answer those four questions that we talked about, and then you want to tell them the next step to take. So I'm going to cover uh, some more things I'll mention right now, but uh, these are kind of somewhat optional, but I found that they do help build that trust and they strengthen the reason of why that person might choose you over someone else. So uh, a couple ideas. If you've worked with well-known brands, you can show that. You can either like have their logos up there. You can put it in text. You can put links, whatever you want to do uh, to kind of show that you've worked with other clients and some, some big brands if you can. You also want to sprinkle in some client testimonials on the page. Now, if you're just getting started, you don't have any testimonials yet. That's okay. Uh, but if you have clients, you should definitely be asking them for testimonials. And then when you get them, make sure that you put them on the website. 
Uh, and I also like to include descriptions of basically outlining how the hiring process works, like what can they expect. Uh, some people, you know, when they come to you, they've never hired a voice actor before in the past. So they aren't exactly sure like what you need and what they're going to get and how it all works. So if you just have a little section explaining the process, that can help build their confidence in you and themselves so then they know what to expect. If you have video demos or examples from projects that you've done before, you can also include them on the website. That's just going to give them a chance to hear your voice and see what it looks like on a final video project. Uh, and then I also like to include a frequently asked question area. Uh, I'm sure there are questions you get all the time or you will uh, that you can answer up front. So for me, questions that I tend to get a lot are things like, uh, can I listen in while you record? Do you accept credit cards? Do I have to pay first? Are you available this week? Uh, if that happens to be one that you get off and you could even put like a calendar on the website that shows your availability and then they could book you right there from that calendar. That would make it even easier for them uh, if, they, if they have that question in their mind. Other questions that come up from time to time are things like, uh, is there any script content that you won't record? Uh, can you mix music to the voiceover? Uh, over time, you're just going to notice that the questions seem to keep coming up over and over again. And so you can add them to the FAQ section. And you're probably going to be answering questions for some people that they didn't even know that they had, but they're going to be glad that you answered them. All right, so if you put all these things together, you're going to have a well-optimized, high-performing voiceover website. And then all you have to do is just start promoting it and driving as much traffic to it as you can. And one easy, passive way that you can use to bring people to your website that I wanted to mention, uh, it's real simple. You just add your website to your email signature. So then anytime you send an email to anyone, even if it's if it's not somebody you know, you're trying to get voiceover work from, anybody that you're uh, communicating with in email, uh, they have the chance at seeing your website address and they may click through. And I can just say from my experience, you know, I've had several voiceover jobs come in from personal emails that I've sent where they've just seen my email signature. They see the website in the email signature. They go to the website and then they've ended up hiring me to do something for them. So that could happen for you as well. And you also want to make sure that you're anytime you're sending email, especially if you're doing any kind of marketing or trying to get people to your website, make sure that you're sending it from a professional email address. So it should be like your name at yourwebsite.com. You don't want to be sending it from a free account like Gmail or AOL. So that's pretty much it. That is the layout that I recommend for a voiceover website. We call it a website, but really it could just be one finely crafted landing page. It doesn't have to have like a huge blog or uh, hundreds of pages on the website. You don't need all that for a voiceover website. And one quick reminder, if you want this exact layout set up and done for you, it comes with hosting, SSL, you get the VO demo player and other stuff. Uh, make sure that you check out voiceacting101.com slash website. That is where you can get details on the VO website template. So check that out, voiceacting101.com slash website. And if you have a voiceover website, I'd love to check it out. Make sure that you leave a comment with a link below. I hope this helped you. I hope the whole series on voiceover websites helped you. I'll talk with you next time. Have a great week.